Now in the previous two sections, we have seen how to configure the static routing for two routers and three routers. And we have practically verified that once we configure the routing, uh, you'll see one door network and two door network will, will communicate with each other. But I just want to understand how it's going to work, how the routing process is going to happen. So let's try to understand in this section, we are going to see how the routing is going to work and how the router is going to do the routing lookup and what happens if there is no route in the routing table uh, something like that so this uh, is really important for you to understand because when you do some troubleshooting on the routers so this is how we do we do the checking like uh, whether there is an entry is there or not if there is no entry then what are the things we need to check and what might make the reason uh, for for there is no communication between them so like that so the first thing I'm going to generate a ping message. Let's say the source address is 192.168.1.1 and then 192.168.2.1, Let's say I'm going to send a packet from 192.168.1.1 and the destination is 192.168.3.1. So whenever a PC realizes that the packet here, it will see what is the source address. Source address is 192.168.1.1 and the destination is 192.163.1. Now first it will try to differentiate whether they are on the same network or whether they are on the different networks. Now logically they are on the different networks because of the subnet mask we are using 255.255.255.0. So there are three network portions which means they are on the different networks because the network portion is different. So whenever a PC realizes that the destination is on a different subnet, destination is on a different subnet, it will simply forward the packet to the gateway. And that too, if you define what is the gateway, that too, if you tell who is the gateway. So how to define the gateway on the PCs? If you remember, we go to config mode and then we, we just assign that gateway something like this. We define here. If I don't define this gateway, in that case, the PC will, will never come to know uh, who is the router. Suppose, let's say if I remove this address. So what I'll do is I'll remove this address. If you remove this address, then the packet will never reach the router. It will only search within the LAN, which means uh, any packet destined for a different network, it will not be sent to the router. And if it is not sent to the router, there is no way it goes to the other networks. So if you want to have a communication process between the two or more different networks, every PC in the LAN must know who is the gateway. That's mandatory. And we define the gateway address by using an option called default gateway. So default gateway option is mandatory to have in the for all the devices. If there is no default gateway assigned or if there is any default gateway assigned, which is a wrong gateway, in that case, your packet will not reach the router. So this is the first thing we need to check. Okay, so check whether the gateway is correct or not. Okay, so the next thing is once we once the gateway is correct, once the gateway is assigned or the packet reaches the router, that is router one, the packet reaches router one. What router one is going to do? Router one is going to check the routing table. Now, how to verify the routing table? So first thing, what is the destination network ID? The packet reaches to router one and the destination network ID is 192.168.3.network. So the router one or the routers are not concerned about uh, what are the exact IP addresses. They work based on the network IDs. And it says the packet is coming from one door network and it is supposed to go to three door network. Okay, so let's go to router one and check the routing table. So if you remember in the previous section, we did the routing. So it will see whether the router one is having an entry for three dot network or not. If there is an entry, it will try to forward to 10.002. If there is no entry, in that case, it is going to simply drop the packet. The packet reaches the router and it will drop here and it says, I don't know where is two dot network it's going to drop your packet. So when you're doing some troubleshooting, ensure that you must have a route in the routing table. If you have the route in the routing table, means uh, the router knows where it is and also ensure that the next hop address is correct. Instead of giving 10.2, if you give some other address 11.2 or 15.2 something, and if it is not going to reach this network, in that case, it will affect the communication. So in this scenario, the next stop is correct. So the router one says, you, if you want to go to two door network, three door network, you have to go via, via 10.002.
But now the router says, okay, so to reach a uh, 3.0 network, I have to go via 10.002, but where is this 10.0 network? On which interface? So the router one is going to check the routing table one more time, and it says, to go to 10.0 network, I have to go out of S0 by 0. It says, okay, to go to 10.002, go out of this interface so that you reach router 2. Now your packet uh, will go out of S0 by 0, which means it is checking the routing table one more time and it goes out of S0 by 0 and then it reaches which router? It reaches router 2. Now again on the router 2, the same thing happens. It's going to check the destination entry. My destination network entry is 192.168.3. network. And then on the router 2, it is going to check the routing table. Let's verify the same on the router 2. 192.168.3. network. Do you have an entry here? We have an entry, which means the router 2 knows where is 192.168.3. network. And to reach that network, we have to go via 11.002. So that's the next hop. Okay, so it says, the router 2 says, okay, you want to go to this network, go via 11.002. But the router 2 says, but the packet says, okay, to go to 11.002, which interface, which direction I should go? It sees this direction. It says that, okay, you want to go to 11.002, go out of S0 by 1. Or actually, it will check the routing table. Let's, uh, let's go to router 2 and check one more time. Where is that 11.0 network? It is on S0 by 1. So which means the packet simply reaches from the router 2 reaches router 3. So it goes out of S0 by 1 and out of S0 by 1 means the packet reaches router 3. Now router 3 again the destination address is 192.168.3.0 network. The packet says I want to go to 3 round network and on the router 3 it's going to check the routing table again. So show IP route. And do you have any entry for 3 dot network? Yes, we have an entry and it is my own directly connected interface on F0 by 0. Now the router 3 says, okay, to go to 3 dot network, you have to go out of this interface S0 by 0. From there, the packet reaches the switch and the switch will find the exact device address that is 3.1 and then it will do some ARP resolution, ARP to find the MAC address. Uh, this is something I'm really getting into more in detail in my switching concepts. So as of now, I'm not getting into that. So it reaches the switch and the switch will take the responsibility of forwarding to that particular host. Now this is how the routing lookup happens. This is how the routing lookup happens. And even when you're doing some troubleshooting, we need to ensure that if we, if we have some issues like 1.1 is not able to communicate with 3.1 and uh, you need to check hop by hop whether the next hop is correct or not, if the interface is up or not, like that. Yeah, router IP address will be the gateway. So when we say gateway means nothing but we are giving the IP address of the router facing the LAN interface. Okay. So understanding this routing lookup is really important for you. And this is something, it's not specific to static routing. It can be any routing protocol. Whatever the routing you're using, it's going to do the same thing. The only difference is if you're using static routing, you may see as S. If you're using dynamic routing, you may see as R or D, something like that. Depends upon the protocol like RIP, EHRP, OSPF. But uh, the understanding this basic routing process is uh, really important to know how the router works and how the routing lookup happens and then also for troubleshooting as well.